Warnings are coming from every angle today. Inflation expectations, super high valuations, unrealistic suggestions that never pan out. It's a mess and the people will have to clean it up. We can look at fundamentals and just about everyone acknowledges that they no longer matter. But of course, they no longer matter until they do. Inexperienced investors will be shocked when they realize it's possible for their stocks to actually see red. The Fed has done a great job to pretend that they see no risks and that they are there to support the portfolios of the retail investor. Those who fail to read about the creation of the Fed, sadly, they will never learn their lesson. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, I want to begin by talking about Michael Burry. I've done some videos recently breaking down exactly what he had to say, warning about the massive bubble that we are dealing with right now. As I have said in the previous videos, just because Michael Burry said something does not mean that it's going to actually take place. Nobody knows what's going to take place. But when you actually make a prediction like this and you put it on paper and you bet that direction and you have a very uh, accurate, you know, in the previous cycle when everybody was on the other side and you were saying, no, that's not right. And I'm going in this direction. It takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of courage to do that, to be on the other side of that. So I commend it regardless. You know, it's so easy to all follow the trend. Oh, everybody's doing this. Let's just join the herd. But it's very difficult, in fact, to be on the opposite end, to be the underdog. Okay. Now, I'm not necessarily just saying this for Michael Burry. I'm making a generalized statement here. Okay. So this is what I wanted to get to first. Then I want to look at what's going on with the central banks, not just the Federal Reserve. I'll give you some updates and I will tell you a great resource to find out what's going on with the other central banks as well. All right. And then we're going to look at what's happening with the job situation. Can you believe unemployment went down again? I mean, the U3 unemployment rate is has become an absolute joke if if it wasn't already. But anyway, I have a lot more to cover. So let's get into it right away. Big short investor Michael Burry says that he'll stop tweeting after warning of market bubbles for months. So apparently he deleted almost all of his tweets, leaving his 400,000 followers with only music and restaurant recommendations. So I'll show you that in just a second. But essentially what he had to say was a quote down here. And that is, by the way, it was in Vietnamese, so you have to translate it. You know my position, no need to hear more from me. He put that out already. He made the statements previously. It's a bubble. Look at this stock. And he mentioned Tesla. Look at how, you know, this has grown so ridiculously. And he made that, you know, with a whole bunch of references to Weimar Germany and the way that things are going. There's so much money being pumped in from every angle. Inflation here is just going absolutely berserk and the people who are unwilling to see it well that's on them so he's made that very clear and i just found it interesting here is his actual twitter account and as you can see there you know the bio has just some bands and I wanted to also note what was down here. This is the translation from Twitter. No more, you know where I am standing. Regardless, same thing, depending on where you look at the translation. But ultimately, this is, to me, very, uh, very telling about where Michael Burry is at today. We could look at his portfolio. We'll look at the 13 Fs as they come out. I'm going to give you updates on it. But I just wanted to make it very clear that at this point, he's saying, I made my warnings. I let you know this time because last time I was on the opposite end. I was trying to tell people, but I guess, you know, he didn't have that popularity at the time. So it didn't have the attention on him. And so he said, I, you know, I tried to warn, but nobody wanted to listen to me. So now this time I'm making it extremely clear. So we'll see what the future has in store. 
Investors haven't fully grasped inflation is dead ahead, economist Mark Zandi warns. Investors may want to hold on even tighter. Moody's Analytics Mark Zandi believes Wall Street is significantly underestimating the seriousness of an inflation comeback, and he warns it will affect every corner of the market, from big tech to cyclical trades. Quote, inflationary pressures will develop very quickly. I don't think there's any shelter here. And this is something that I have talked about numerous times very quickly. It happens to be, if you look at it historically, one minute inflation is running a little hot, the next minute it's out of control. And you know what the central banks try to do. You see inflation picking up and they try to stop that. How do they apply that? Number one, they have to actually increase interest rates. And in order to do that, they have to actually print less money. They got to print less money. Have you ever heard them do that? Well, they they tried a little bit of that in 2018. That was the uh, worst year for the stock market since the financial crisis. And of course, the market just believes, well, they just will continue to print money. They'll just continue to bring interest rates down, and that's it. I've seen many, many, many comments suggesting the same. But unfortunately, you have to understand how they actually work within this system, the open market operations, and all of the daily events that take place at the desk with the New York Bank, the Federal Reserve, and what they are doing. Okay, that is all integral. Of, co- of course, you have to read the history as well and understand why they are doing all of this. But just seeing the daily, you know, the daily intricacies of the Federal Reserve would give more insight as to why, if inflation is picking up, how they will absolutely have to react. That's an ab- that's a fact. Here is the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. It actually declined somewhat, but of course, as always, this is depending, you know, week to week changes. We could see that the general trend is right here, over $7.5 trillion on the balance sheet, heading towards $10 trillion. It could very well be there by the end of the year. We'll see. I've talked about this numerous times, but if you want to see the full breakdown, not just the balance sheet, and this is how you get it. It's the H41, and you type in into the search engine Fed, F-E-D, space, H41, and you're going to get to the federalreserve.gov website. Don't go to CNBC to get that information. Don't go to Bloomberg to get that information. Don't go to Ask Your Barber or a Reddit forum, okay? You go to the Federal Reserve's website, FedH41, and you can see the full breakdown, all of their different programs, what had happened over the last while. It gives you the dates, gives you that full breakdown right here. And essentially, we're looking at the same total overall, but this gives you the actual breakdown all in one chart. So if you want to know what's going on with all the different central banks, and the one I really like here is the PBLC, the People's Bank of China, because it's a little bit more difficult to get that information, you can get it from Yardeni, Y-A-R-D-E-N-I.com. So what you do is you go to a search engine, you type in Yardeni space central banks, okay? And you'll get this uh, monthly balance sheets. I think they have the weekly as well. But this right here gives you a little bit of insight. And this one is a recent just uh, from March 5th, actually. And you could actually scroll through this document. It's short. And it just gives you the charts that you need to know right now. For example, the total assets of major central banks. So if we zoom in on that, I can give you a little look at what's been happening. You could see it's broken down. The Fed, ECB, the BOJ, and the PBLC, guess what? They're all printing a heck of a lot of money. Now, the PBLC increased the least uh, in relation to GDP, in relation to uh, you know a total number. However, they are all printing a lot of money. That's very clear, not just since the financial crisis, but of course, 2020 and beyond. I found this to be quite shocking, even though I cover this every single day. Major central banks' total assets, and this is... Fed, ECB, BOJ, and the PBLC. It's not all of the central banks. We are now at $29 trillion. $29 trillion worth. That is ridiculous. By any stretch of the imagination, we've never thought this would be possible, and yet here we are. Once they 
did this, this ridiculous behavior in 2008, 2009, they were thinking, okay, we're going to do it temporarily and then we'll roll it back. And it is clear they are never going to roll this back if they don't want to collapse the system. But of course, that's a whole different story, isn't it? I was reading through this article here and it was talking some nonsense about Powell's dashboard shows how far the US economy has to go on jobs. They also made reference to Janet Yellen and so on. But there was this little note here and it was something that I didn't even cover previously. So I wanted to do so now. The unemployment dips to 6.2%. You have eight 18 million people, 18 million people that are still on some sort of, you know, emergency assistance. 18 million people. There are 40 plus, I gotta get new stats on this. Four, I keep saying that 40 million plus people on food stamps in the United States. And you're trying to tell me that the unemployment rate is 6.2%, even Jerome Powell. All right. The multimillionaire Jerome Powell said that the rate is actually closer to 10%. What is the value in the 6.2% other than to be used as propaganda? Because as you can see, what are the headlines that get pushed out there? Is it Powell suggesting, you know what, actually the rate is more close like uh, close to 10% and so on? Or is it unemployment rate dips jobs numbers looking great low paid low wage no bells and whistles type of job minimum wage type of jobs that are the ones that are coming back right now oh that information isn't going to be known you're just going to get the headline economy starting to come back that's it. And that's what people push out there. That's what's helping the stock market along to some degree. Of course, all the stimulus as well. But this is what happens. And then, oh, wait a second, there's actually a problem. And that's why stocks don't come down gently. If everything was true, if you knew the truth, and let's say not you, but the investors knew the truth, you would have much more soft drops that would be a fact. Instead, what you have is every time falling off a cliff, it fell so hard in March 2020, we had never seen anything like that before. Why? Because it had gone up so fast. And this is not healthy. These type of markets are always seen as being unhealthy when we look back at them in the past, but nobody wants to acknowledge it at the time. Why? Because their 401k, their retirement account, their portfolio of seven shares of Amazon are being hurt by that talk. This was an interesting article from Wolf Street, and it was talking about the pent up demand and why that's not necessarily true. So they believe the expectation here is that, okay, economy is starting to open up. As a result, these people are going to go back out there and start spending all their money. But he did point out something. And this is, let me, let me just start from the top. In addition to the free money, millions of homeowners didn't have to make their mortgage payments because they entered their mortgages into forbearance programs. At one point, 4.3 million mortgages were in forbearance, according to the MBA. Currently, 2.6 more million mortgages are still in forbearance. Federal student loans were automatically entered into forbearance programs and borrowers didn't have to make payments. Eviction bans allowed strung out households to spend some money on other things than rent. Now, that to me is telling because you've got millions of people who suddenly did not need to pay into something that they were before, their rents, their mortgages, and now they have some extra capital to work with. So were they diligently saving? Some people were, but a lot of others, we know how it works, a lot of others didn't. They were spending that in other places. And unfortunately, I think they've got, uh, you know, just, you know, I, I just want to say that I think it's going to be a lot worse than what many have been expecting. That That's it. And that's the economy. The stock market, different situation, because that's all dependent on what the Federal Reserve decides. 
This right here is very, very telling. And we are looking at China's credit impulse. And if you look at the previous cycles, 2013 cycle, 2016 cycle, it shows the exact same pattern today. Right now, the black line, that is the credit impulse over the last 12 months percent change. And if you see, been there, done that, China's credit impulse follows the previous two cycles. I happen to look at this as just one indicator of many. But essentially, the amount of money that's being put out there in China happens to be a good indicator for the rest of the world. So you're looking at this, it started to come and turn over. Now, maybe it goes the opposite direction, it comes up. We don't know. But this at least tells you at this moment, it's following the exact same pattern. And usually, there's a downturn. Doesn't mean a crash of 100%, of 90%, of 80%, 50%, no, no. But what it does tell you is that perhaps a slowdown in the stock market, in the economy as well, is coming. Now, that's just one indicator, as always, but I wanted to point it out. That's all for this video. If you found that informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn about e-commerce, you can do so for free at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to know about the financial system, top to bottom, A to Z, everything that will get you going and more is in these two books. You can check it out at the link in the description. And if you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. A lot of detail in here. Click it and I'll see you there.